spread the revolution and we're gonna attack enemies that have over one million troops. Before we start, remember that you can subscribe to this channel to get notified about all the future videos and obviously support us growing. Look at that, we are back with the chaotic succession campaign, so a campaign on changing my nation every 30 years. As you remember, we started as the Ottomans, moved to Bohemia, Pope, Uzbek, Burgundy, United States, Ethiopia, Persia and we played as Prussia in the last episode. We just entered age of revolutions and this is why I suggested to you in the latest video that we are gonna go and play France today to make it revolutionary and expand as much as possible in Europe. We are starting in a war against Great Britain, which in theory I could peace out for uh, simply a few provinces and we might even think about doing so. So for sure I need these free trade centers that we have and uh, I don't have naval advantage, I don't have any troops. I could get a merc stack over here and just destroy them just to take a few more provinces ideally something like that to also have York. But uh, the question is, is it even worth it to take loans and overextend myself for that? Honestly, I don't think it really is worth it. This is why I will go for this kind of the peace deal. So all of these promises, maybe one more that they're gonna accept. I'm not sure if they're gonna accept anything. Yeah, I could take this promise, so maybe instead of Norfolk I could do something like that. Then take a little bit of money, nothing that they're gonna accept. This is not expansion, sends the peace deal. This is perfect, it's gonna increase our power in the English channel. We want to take it higher to make more income over there. And let me just start coring this promise. Yeah, I also even don't have enough army mana to care of that. Let me just also root out corruption, we need to get rid of it for sure. And now, how to start the revolution, alright? French Revolution, I need to have less than two stability as one of the requirements and less than zero stability for the other requirements because otherwise it's like 50 loans, then inflation, oh, inflation so yeah, I assume it's zero, less than zero prestige, yes, for sure the only way they can do it is to go below zero stability. As I don't have deployed, yes, it's gonna be very straightforward. Let me, ooh, whoa, 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 what is this mana generation? Let's maybe start with cancelling the some of the privileges. This one I want to keep. I don't need the tariffs. I don't need the morale of navies. And here, I don't need the discipline. I'm just gonna, yeah. Save the power points. I'm gonna then cancel all these military accesses. Now our mana generation is just a little bit better. And what I have to do, do we have any royal merges? We do not. I'm gonna go to my allies. I'm gonna royal merge them. And what's the worst part? <laughs> my allies are having the wrong types of the government, so I cannot try and merge any of them. Like, really, any of them. So what I'll do, I'll go for the diplomatic here, I'll go for the dynastic actions and see royal merges. Okay, I can royal marry Nassau. I could try and marry Spain, but I don't want to do so. Let's royal marry Naples and royal marry Norway. In the meantime, turn off all of my forts uh, as well as armies. I'll keep just these ones. And I probably also need to transfer, uh, organize the troops in the homeland and send some of them uh, to England as they're gonna be some rebels. Now, breaking our emerge is uh, minus 10 prestige, that's fine, we have 99 of it, but more importantly, minus one stuff. Then I'm gonna also break it with Naples. So that's already zero. You can see that's still not enough, I need to break it below zero. Mr. Spain, I do Royal Mary just to break it. In the meantime here, what's the combat with? Combat with 38, we have uh, a card that I'm not gonna use. We have 72, zero, okay, let's maybe do stacks like 25 of infantry. It's gonna be 18 of artillery, right? And here this two are gonna be the same. Also get all of my navies around here into one place. Remember, I have navies all around the world. I also have a big army. In here, which honestly, I'll just keep half of it in case of rebels. I really don't need to force here neither, so let me delete this. We need to save money. It's just pain and very slow, but I have to do that. Now, with minus one stability, the disaster will start rolling upon a month. You see, I'm having everything, and as I have high absolutism, it means that it's gonna pretty much start in 1719, three years from now. Oh, this is something terrible. What I can see here is that these promises are stated. And I need, to, like, 
Why would you state it, Mr. AI? Just let me unstate it and add all of this to the trade company. It's transferring to English channel where you need to increase the percentage of income you are earning. And that should be fairly easy. I see that we are paying a lot for our fleet, so why don't I go and take the heavy ships and turn them off? Maybe besides the flagship. And for all the rest of the ships, we're gonna use them to protect trade in the English channel. Remember, we have this bonus that is trade group map trade power per shipping fleet. Let's see how it's gonna increase our trade income. Well, in the English channel right now, it's at the level of 45. And with this, it's already 69. This is a good change. This is gonna be 25, 0, 20. Not perfect. If I combine two stacks, I have a little bit over the combat with. But remember, the new combat with is coming on the next mini technology, which is actually gonna be important. And I'm gonna probably use it for my huge war purpose. Why don't I go and also increase our power projection? That will work with a simple scumfrain salt to Portugal. So now it's at level 56. Navy code is bad. This is just a waste of money to keep these heavy ships. Look, instead of 38, I'm gonna pay just 9 ducats for my navy now. My income in the English channel is already at the level 110, and we will keep improving that because AI of course wasn't able to take the full advantage out of it yeah it's 103 i just left prussia they are already expanding look they are fighting with bohemians to go and control them yes if i wanted to i i could ally the ottomans uh, but no i'm just gonna go through french revolution roleplay no alliances with bigger nations there goes the event the east asia this event fires together with the disaster you can see that my stability dropped to minus three we must show our rules so you find the uh, revolution no, I definitely gonna wait at least a month to recover my morales and my forts before I do something else. And honestly, before I go and click that, I need to use the states fully because remember, you lose the states when you become a republic, and I'll be a revolutionary republic. So let me sell titles. Oh, look, I cannot take the monopolies because France does not have a revolution disaster ticking or active. So even if it was loading, it wouldn't work. How about the nobility? Anything here that I could use before ending? Oh, I could take definitely the one person loans. I can take the prestige to increase it, and that's gonna be pretty much it. Can go ahead for the second option, which will activate the storming of the Bastille. Vive la revolution that changes our government's type. Now, what is happening? I can choose the candidate. Let's make it a military one. So this is gonna be Louis de Rue, 41 years old. And what happens is that when you have like the main revolution country, you're becoming a revolutionary target. A revolutionary target has all these bonuses: more of armies, more of navies, maximum power, manpower recovery speed, land maintenance, unjustified demands. I have new mechanic which is a revolutionary zero, so I don't have my absolute. We need more of it to take more lands because it does affect the admin efficiency. So I can do, I can go for a mission which is French Revolution that gives me 5% army efficiency flat and revolutionary zeal. So now this is already 32, we'll be increasing that. To increase that, we pretty much have to go at war. We have factions where it's the Jacobins. They give us construction cost and tax meta. We use diplomatic reputation. There are Imperials, which is state maintenance, diplomatic reputation, liberty desire of subjects, but we lose yearly public tradition. Or the Girondist, which is manpower recovery speed, force limit and discipline, but we get more AE. So ideally we should play between the Jacobins and Girondists. So for example, during war we uh, we go with the Girondists. Once we want to peace out, we go for the Jacobins to get less AE. So for now, I just go with the Jacobins. And we have the new government reforms. Remember, it's still 1.33 reforms. What do we have here? Max point to cultures, yearly poppy tradition, culture conversion costs. I'll go for the max point to cultures. Yearly revision is zero or improved relations. Let me go for the zeal. State maintenance. GAF capacity, global trade power, or exploitation cost. Let's go for the GAF capacity. And finally here, you can choose between institution basement cost, revolutionaries versus monarchies mechanics, or yearly public condition. Let me go for this mechanic, which you will see that uh, when it's revolutionaries, I get additional 10% more of armies, yearly public condition, and yearly revolutionary zeal. So this is nice. Or we get a monarchies, which is deep prep and power participate and manner, so not that important. And the sixth tier here is giving me stab cost, diplomat, or powers cost. Nice. Or maximum revolutionary zeal. And that's a tough choice. I'll go for the old powers cost for us. And about that, can we know France already used the golden era? And about here, church power, let me just get rid of this. And instead, I'll go for the missionary strength to convert the provinces faster. And instead of manpower recovery speed, I'll go for the development cost because we'll be most probably developing a little bit. But anyway, look, this is our development map. The country's really developed a lot. In the meantime, it won't be easy 
to boost the stability because we have no Republican tradition and we are a revolution. So it's gonna be tough. I need to take it at least level one. And at least I got plenty of money that allows me to repay the six and a half percent loans. And I'm only gonna left with the one percent loans and the rest of the money will be invested. For example, in improving the trade centers. Spreading the zoom in the Republic. Lose Republican tradition? No. Admin mana? No. Diplo points? No. Mill points? Oh, okay. Let's just lose mill points. At the same time as I have money, let me improve these two boys. Maybe instead of this, I'll go for the trade guy. And this guy to level 2, so I still have enough money. What do we have here? Regiment drill loss, and it only affects the okay, revolutionary guard, so I can increase the force limit. And this is actually nice. For the revolutionary guard, I can get, get fire damage received and shock damage received. So let me take this. Remember, this is just 36 of force limit of them, and of course, I'm gonna use them hard. What for sure I have to build after two furnaces with my money. And I'm gonna also start building the four semi buildings because we need to bring that higher if you want to go for the war against Europe. Our amount of republicanization is really problematic. And not only for stop cost, but in, in general if I wanted to re-elect or something. Let me just go and spend some um, nil points to first of all increase republicanization and at the same time revolutionize zeal. So, this way it's a win-win situation, get it to a highest number and this is right now 65, so also boosting stability is only as a hundred and sixty points. I'll still wait for this to increase more. Uh, by the way, this is my uh, rebels map mode. It's because the disaster is giving 10 national unrest everywhere. We need to get rid of that. That's why the stability is so important. The reign of terror, I either lose free stability if I have minus three already. All, all this bad modifiers. Of course I'm just gonna lose free stability. You can't lose stability if you have already minus three. Look, the revolutionary guard is 50% more maintenance, but at the same time minus 20 fire damage, minus 20 shock damage both received, and damage real game modifiers. So actually gonna go and start drilling them. I'll be also deving my provinces so I need to have everything up to 20 development. That's why I'm building universities in the provinces that are around 10. 15 of death already. It's happening guys, everyone is rivaling us. Lotar India, Ethiopia, United States, Great Britain, Portugal, Shun, Spain, Prussia. We are rivaled all of these nations and look at Prussia, they are expanding. Why do they go and take admin advisor, or is gonna be with the stab cost, and boost it? At least up to zero. The coup, I either go for the monarchies, the ruler dies, or I get five Republican traditions, so... Obviously, I will go for the Republican tradition in this case. Election, Revolution, and Republic. Now it is the election I like. 554, 262, or 442. 554 is just a pure beauty. Country slowly increasing to all of the statistics with 390 of income, 166,000 maximum power. It's a little bit low. 268 of force. How is that with incomes compared to other countries? 860 Ottomans, 500 Otharingia, 460 Persia. 430 papal states. What the hell is Persia? Okay, guys, this is the last click. 200 mana. Get it to free. Now I need to stop the rebels. Where are these rebels? They were in this province, but I reoccupied it and they are gone. I don't. I have no idea where they are. Ah, fun. This represent Andamans. Okay, at last, guys. Let me just research this province and. Why would we invite me this kind of to war, Mr. Japan? Sure, I will join, but. How do you even need me there? Oh, and that's all. Another diplo points lost. Yeah, of course, of course. First bonus in Age of Revolutions. I think I'll go for the artillery damage from back row to just make sure we're gonna crush them in battles. Calmer times. That ends disaster. 50 admin mana. Anderson country should be absolute zero now. So what I'll focus on right now, no Mr. Spain, I'll focus on preparing for war against you. You have 260,000, so this war should be more or less even, but if you take a look at the modifier, this called Morale Armies, you can see that actually Prash has more than us, but this is purely because they took this technology and don't want to overpay for it. Let me declare the war, call uh, some minor countries, we are gonna probably win it easily anyway. Go on the force march on these guys in Navarra because I want to start strong this war, I want to start to the stack wipe. So we have three stacks, which is 25 0, 20 for as high siege bonus as possible on the force. Let's see. On the fourth level four, this is the maximum bonus. On the fourth level two, it's gonna be even faster. Third stack can go to Burgos and I have two 25k stacks that will be restoring forcing in case of battles. With revolution spreading across our provinces, also my religious zeal is increasing. So also the admin efficiency is higher and higher. Oh no, 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 no. Can I reinforce this battle like really fast? <sighs> no, I don't think so. It's gonna be more worth. 
to run away from this battle and try again. It's just we're losing war score and the war goal is to win the battle skill. The worst part is that they have good generals. My army tradition is complete trash, it's only on level 51. I need to actually increase it. Let me attack here. Let me reinforce with these guys quickly. So now if you compare our army qualities, you'll see that they have 1.2 less morale and 12 less discipline. So that should be easy for us. They have poor numbers and a far better general. This general is, I think, winning them this battle now. We go and reinforce with the other armies that I have. And the thing is, this battle is pretty big. That should be also a big amount of the war score that we get out of it. <sighs> we reinforce the last second. And oh yeah, not only the general, but also of course attack on the mantis. That's the thing that we need on the region so hard. Let's see the losers. Yeah, we've lost far more. That was expected. We got another government reform here. And that's the choice between admin possible policies, uh, deeper possible policies, more of armies of manpower, tolerance, or I guess expansion impact and province war score cost. Let's go for more morale. I want to stack more of it. It's right now eight. Hello there, Mr. Spain. How is it to fight a oh, minus four? I guess it's really okay. Look at the difference in losses. And thank you so much for your free war score. Now, if I wanted to take anything on this castle's belly, remember that I have to take spread the revolution, which will give me 167 of each monarch point. 167. So actually, going, I'm gonna hit the points cap. So before I peace out, I'll take all the decks because next January they're gonna be on zero over here. And on top of that, yeah, I would like to take at least all of these provinces. So we need more war score anyway. What's the cost of this technology? It's 400, 400, 420 x free. So now I'm more of army. 10. If you compare to the other countries here, yeah, we have a slight advantage. Also, I can unlock a new ID group which is gonna be quantity because we really lack manpower. That's gonna increase it to 300,000 already. Okay, I'm just gonna piss up for this. It's 86% of the war score, they're not gonna give me anything more. And now our amount of money is even more beautiful, so I can take another idea here. That's instead of 3.1 thousand, 3.3 thousand monthly manpower. We start calling these provinces, I'm gonna straight at attack the Great Britain right now. They don't have any allies really, right? Yeah. How many troops they have? 76,000. I'm gonna send two cannon stacks over there. Honestly, I have money, so why don't I go and improve London? Or maybe first this beauty. Let's develop it three times. Improve it to level two, and then I will improve London to level three to increase my trade power English channel, and ideally gonna get close soon to 500 of income, so we keep increasing that very nicely. Mister in Great Britain. Let's take a look. What can we do in one battle if we go with our full force? <sighs> they have four morale, I have ten and a half. Like, what the hell is happening to them? This is good. So let me go after them because we need to win battles to get an actual war score, right? And why spread revolution is also important. You can see all of the princes are getting the spread the revolution modifier, which is plus 21 local armies. This is gonna be problematic with them. Prash is also spreading the revolution. I'm gonna spread the revolution to the British Isles as well. How is the war doing? Shun keeps expanding. Uzbek is dying to Transoxiana and even Scandinavia. United States, I think, they conquered a lot of lands from the Spanish, yes, from the Spanish on is just a second ago. I just slow it. What great power they are right now. We have Ottomans number one, then Spain, Lotharingia, Portugal, Shun, As, Commonwealth, and Prussia. Wait, 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 wait. did I see Prussia? <laughs> Look what this Prussia is doing. I love it. This Prussia is just so confident. They even fighting with Commonwealth right now. You can see they have far more troops, but if I go on the force march to Dithmarschen, maybe for reinforce. I'll be able to win this battle. Nah, they reinforce. But still, look at the army call the difference. I mean, they have more discipline, but my morale is significantly better. So, I'm not actually sure if it's gonna be enough to win this battle. Yes, that's easily enough to win this battle. Look at the difference in the losses, and that's five war score for us for free. Monopoly company form. That's Diplo points on trade efficiency, 6,000 ducats or eight and a half thousand ducats. Lovely. Let me go invest it in the something, but I don't really know what to invest it on because. For example, universities, they are already everywhere. And this Prash is actually seems to be losing this war. Prash and Lotharingia losing to Commonwealth in Scandinavia. Is Lotharingia in any other war? No. Lotharingia, 400,000 troops. 200,000 from Prash. These guys have 300,000, these guys have 160,000. How is Prussia losing that? Berlin is being sieged down. Let's go! Revolution in Prussia! Revolution in Berlin! Oh, that's beautiful. Oh yes, it's already there! This flag is just pathetic, honestly. 
but maybe it will help Russia to actually win this war against Commonwealth and the others. Because the moment they finish the war, I'm gonna start my own against Lotharingia and Papal State and Prussia, because they are all allies to each other, it's just like central powers. By the way, you know that AIs really tend to develop future coal mines, and yeah, Overnier was developed 50 times, even though it's a freaking mountain. Let me just develop some of these provinces up to 20 for the new building slot, and to not hit the points cap. Okay, as I can at last white piece Scandinavia, I don't want to prolong the war with them. Thanks to this, I can easily piece out Great Britain with 99% of the war, so I can get even more than I planned. So, let's go for borders like this again. Not aggressive expansion and revolution of France is looking even better, but again, to fix these borders, we need to go after Rotaringia. So, let's look at the revolution map mode right now. You can see it's spreading and it's also spreading thanks to us. It's spreading everywhere. We even have a revolution as it Tondo over here already. You know, there's one problem with Prussia becoming revolutionary. They, they, they've lost the Prussian government mechanic. Most importantly, they joined the revolution and they are winning the war right now, which they were losing with uh, the Prussian monarchy. How is it looking in the world on the amount of the troops? Let's go to armies. Total 809,000 from Ottomans, 1.2 million force limit, 333,000 Persia. Gujarat has 300,000. As well as Shun, Notring has 270, Ayufai has 270, even as 250, Transoxiana, Portugal, Commonwealth and the others. At last we have the second highest income in the world, only the Ottomans have more. How about the treasury? 21,000, almost 237 from Mr. Pope. Voltaire publishes Philosophical letters that is diplomata, innovative, doesn't guarantee form progress. Why I'm using already like a hundred ships in the English channel, why don't I go and try sending some ships to Lübeck, where I have 12% of trade power, but if I send 30 ships and I'm building more, it should increase further from 12% to 24% and transferring 67 value from there, and our income is 620. Also, Prussia and Lotharingia finally finished the war. I'm gonna give them until 1740 to recover a little bit, like mainly manpower, and we're gonna start the war against them. Uzbek might be actually safe, they just allied the Ottomans. So I don't think Transoxiana is gonna, or anyone is gonna dare to attack them. As for the person age of revolutions, I can choose the second one and I'm gonna go for the fourth march. Uh, I know I could go for the fourth thing but I need to win battles in my war goals. With this speed I'm gonna get Ottomans on the amount of income and why is their prestige so low? Are you losing battles or something? Because it seems like you are. Oh, screw it, this two just keep declaring war on the Germans. I don't even have time to attack them during peace but this is a small war that they're gonna win easily so I'm preparing my troops and as promised next year I'm gonna attack. It's to make this war even more spicy, Lotharingia allied United States that are huge. Now how I want to organize my stacks. I want to mainly use a Revolution Guard as my infantry and have two cannon stacks. Cannon stacks should be at least 40, 0, 40. This is why I'm gonna take this 20k cannons and this 20k cannons, then I'm gonna take this 20k cannons and this 20k cannons. You get 40k revolutionary guard, uh, 41 you get 50. I just want, don't want to split the special units on this patch, you still cannot detach them. That's gonna be my cannon stacks. Then on top of that, I have plenty of the reinforcement stacks. By the way, look at my income, how it dropped when I stopped using this fleet to protect my trade in the English channel. Why did I go and do that again? That Augustine Bonaparte is actually linear. So, Two cannon stacks, three reinforcement stacks, with a mouth tick, and we are ready to go. That's not gonna be conquest, that's not gonna be reconquest, that's obviously spread the revolution. And we're gonna attack enemies that have over one million troops. Oh, I have 270,000. I just don't have that much manpower, so if needed, I... No, I'm just gonna go and build more troops right away. That's gonna be additional. Ah, if you do 25k reinforcement stacks, let's do, we should do 20, but it's fine. Let's maybe build another 25k and another 25k troops. So these guys are gonna lead the front line on the north with two reinforcement stacks. You guys are gonna lead the front here with one reinforcement stack. And there goes the first battle because Pope is attacking us. By the way, I need uh, for changes. I need to change this boy into more of armies. I need a policy for the manpower recovery speed. And of course, also, I'm gonna take the trade efficiency thingy and more trade efficiency. And at last, 
I need to find the dystopian advisor again. Oh yes, and the faction change. Right now, we have 20 more discipline than Pope and three more morale. So this battle should be more of an easy peasy for us, even though they attacked us on a low morale on our side. But yeah, it doesn't really matter. What I see here is that uh, there's. Prussian army just next by, so let me just go over here in case they want to attack us again. Let's see Mr. Pop, can I win over here in Saluzzo without even using cannons against you? Because I'm using the reinforcement stacks to this fight. So hopefully, yeah, they're not gonna reinforce. This is a mountain battle, so it's... Yeah, it's a very straightforward and easy fight for us. We, of course, uh, how the revolution works is that when you occupy province as a revolutionary country, you spread the revolution. In this, but I'm not sure. I think we're actually losing far more troops here, so it's not that worth to keep this battle ongoing. Yeah, we've lost double the troops. That's the difference of art at this technology. Well, how about second try, but this time I'm attacking the mountains, but I have the full cannon stack and i think this is a very easy battle just to make sure i win that i'm gonna reinforce with some infantry because obviously that's the goal of this stack they're ideal but you also need ideal reinforcements to not really lose any guns like pop did oh, Metz is down in the meantime you can see we are slowly moving the front line level 8 fort i'm trying to find forts on the lower level like for example put here so it's gonna be easier for us to get this war score if i attack now with these guys i'll be attacking with only 34 troops on the first row that's why I'm reinforcing with this 6,000 troops to have the first row fully filled. And this is most probably a freaking... Oh, my ships. What are you doing? Where, why were you protecting straight? I didn't tell you to do so. Okay. I almost stuck my Pope. Let me go and continue with them. Because they have 30k troops just standing doing nothing next by. Obviously before I'm gonna go and shift consolidate my troops for the full quality. And that should be a very straightforward and easy battle. It's gonna give me another, I don't know, 3 war score? Yeah, 3.4 war score. So we have 17 of it, they've lost 200,000 troops, and we could get Pope on low attitude if we continue fighting like that. Of course I'm helping the Ottomans in the meantime because they also fight Pope, but that's not because of me. Ah, uh, and of course, both Lotharingia and Pope took the tech 27, which is still ahead of time and it's giving half infantry fire. That's actually a lot. Oh, boys, let's look. They have plenty of troops around and that sounds a perfect opportunity for Augustin Bonaparte to show some of his skills. Just for now, they're not standing on the fort. I'll go and receive this fort level to in Bridge first because it's very straightforward and quick thing for us. With Sunlands in the northern Italy siege down, I can white peace Pope. Please do so because this war is, yes, hard enough without them. Look, they still have plenty of more troops. Now we can focus on sieging down the rest of the Lotharingia. These guys will go for Brazegau. These guys will help around. These guys will help on the northern battles. Let's do this. Look, 125, I have 32, 9.1. 10.8 morale. We have a huge advantage over here and they won't even try reinforcing this battle because they simply know that they have no chance, absolutely no chance of winning that. I'm gonna go ahead and attack them in the next province, which could be even a stack wipe. This is stack wipe. Let me go attack them in another province. Just these guys need to follow in case I need some reinforcements. So far, so good. I even attack them by an accident. Which could be a mistake, because they have covered me a little, little bit here. But I have 50k from the south. That can come on the force march and reinforce if needed. Now that I won in this battle, the main one, I can go and reinforce the battle here, because in this battle here I don't have cannons. With the cannons it should be very straightforward and easy for us. And if needed, I have reinforcements next by, but they're not really needed. They are not really needed. Let me go ahead and wipe another stack here. Whoa, 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 whoa. what is this 45,000? Come on, it's casual. I know I'm fighting without cannons in this battle, but cannons are coming. Don't worry, shift console that and go. <sighs> this is just such a big amount of the war score that we're getting for free. How much do we have already? 36 from winning battles. They've lost 250,000 troops. I've lost 250, but remember, it does not cut Pope. That was the main guy that I was killing so far. And I also have more from attrition. Revolution is starting lottering. They just got an event. Now you're just counting, see, for the rebels to actually enforce their demands. And I even got the discipline event from the advisor. Uh, let me go for more mana. So our discipline is already 142. 
But look, what I guess left with only 120k troops and Prussia for 18,000 troops. I want to white piece Prussia sooner. Goodbye, Mr. Prussia. I definitely don't want to fight you anymore. Now you're left with only Lotharingia and United States. That's uh, they seem to not be so willing to come and help their ally here. 63% of the war score maximum from battles we need to occupy more of the provinces. <laughs> what is making this war even funnier? Ottomans just intervened on our side. But I think after the Pope War, Ottomans are left with, yeah, only 560,000 troops. They've lost 300,000 troops, but yeah, I think Pope hurt more in this war. As I'm out of manpower, I'm gonna simply go and slack and once to fix this issue. And also, I don't want to waste much time on this war, so we start rushing this fort. You should make it very straightforward, yes. It's more war score, 73%. I'm gonna wipe all the troops here, while this stack is gonna go and car passage the whole northern lands of them then. There we go, again, spread the revolution and taking all of these provinces to increase my trade power in both Champagne and the English Channel. Thank you, Mr. Lotharingia and the revolution map mode. It's looking absolutely beautiful. What I said, I just did. We have the highest income in game now. Ottomans have three less than us. Also, second highest manpower, 140k less than the Ottomans. Okay, guys, I think this is gonna be it. Just take a look at this map mode. 820 income, 446 force limit, 440,000 maximum power. The perfect nation to dominate Europe by itself as AI. So, guys, this is gonna be all for today. And as always, if you want me to do another episode of the succession series let me know by liking this video because if you hit 4000 likes next episode is coming and of course tell me in comments what i should play next you can see how the world is looking since there's still a big choice of the nations that we didn't touch and for today thank you so much for watching remember to subscribe to this channel to get notified about these future videos and i'm gonna see you very soon